Welcome to the Hey, what's up, what's up, what's up? How you doing? How you been? What's going on? What's good? Are you getting it in? Somebody getting it for you? What's going on, people? Subscribe to my channel. Okay, I want to share this story with you. This is about a guy that's basically in the media like crazy. His name is Ed Buck. Edward Bernard Peter Buck, known as Ed Buck, is the founder of Mission Watchdog Community. Community. He led the campaign to impeach Arizona Republican Governor Evan McLean in 1987 and began a household name in Arizona according to the Arizona public Republic now he was born in 1954 which makes him 65 years old in Ohio now I want to share the story about him what's going on now I really didn't want to do this story only because I heard about it before but I just just didn't feel like doing this story on him at all but um here we go a gay man was found dead in the house of Ed Buck, identified as the porn actor Timothy Hole Hunter Dean. Now, Timothy M. Dean, a 55-year-old African-American man, found dead on Monday in Laurel Apartment, a Lowell Avenue apartment of Ed Buck, has been identified as an employee of Saks Fifth Avenue in Beverly Hill, a member of the National Gay Basketball Association and recently baptized member of one LA religious group based on a Potter House Church in LaBear Avenue. However, a source have told that WEH Ville has Dean also known in a porn circle by the name of Whole Hunter. Now, the Internet Adult Film Database lists Whole Hunter as a performer in 18 adult films. It profiles of Whole Hunter includes a photo of Dean. The first Whole Dean film listed as Dark Chocolate Craven 2 was released in 2007. The last one listed was Interracial Public Pickups 3 was listed in 2016. All films show Whole Hunter having sex with other boys and men. The, the scenes show unique tattoos of Whole Hunter, left arm and on the side, right. Identify to those as far as Dean's arm. Before Dean identified was, before Dean's identity was public record. Seymour Amster, Buck's attorney, told Los Angeles Times that the man found dead in an apartment on 1234 Lowell Avenue was an old friend who died by accident or overdose. Unfortunately, we believe that this is Grant, the substance was ingested in some place other than the apartment. The person came became overtoxicated. In an interview, Dean's roommate for three years said that he was the, a wonderful person. I live with him and he never did drugs. I've never seen him do drugs ever. The relationship between the black porn performer and Buck, a um, 64-year-old white man, known as his donations for his donation to Democratic Party candidate and his own animal rights activist, add another element here to the story has gotten coverage ways and why, nationwide. The coverage had been at the death of Buck's apartment back in May 2017. Uh, Jamil Moore, 26-year-old African-American sex worker, was ruled as met meth a histamine overdose in his diary. Moore had written that Buck had once injected him with a highly act excuse me, a highly addictive and dangerous drug and had been paid him to do so. A woman from a coroner office said with the body of Timothy Dean found dead on January the 7th in Egg Buck Apartment, 1234 Lowell Avenue, 
In the weeks and months after Moore's death, a young black escort came forward to describe the experience with Buck and one provided a video of the encounter of Buck's apartment. Black activists call for we opened an investigation into Morris' death where the L.A. attorney office said that they did not find significant evidence to support allegation that Buck was responsible for Morris' death and that they had called the more aggressive investigation into Dean's death. The deaths of Jamil Moore and the young man who died Monday beyond tragic. However, before they both However, because they're both black gay men, justice does not prevail, said David Johns, executive director of the Washington, D.C.-based National Black Justice Coalition in a statement released before Dean and his age has been identified in public records. Now, John calls it a public knowledge that Ed Buck was allegedly giving young black gay men harmful drugs long before his second young man died in his home and added that it was also his hope that these tragic events encouraged conversation and about the fact that the lives of black gay men are not disposable. John also said that in any violence against black people must be confronted with the full might of justice at their disposal. This is especially true at the time where the National Commander-in-Chief is identifying identity politics to divide the score political joints, John, in the statement continue. They also said that, it also said, has been a call for the politicians who have received donations from Buck to give that money to various causes, ranging from the NAACP to the gay groups to justice for Jamil, which has which was organized by Jasmine Kennick, the media uh, strategist for his Moore's mother, Letitia Nixon. The U.S. Re Re U.S. Rep. Ted has announced that he will not he will do that donate he will do that donating the five thousand dollars to um, Labu Legal of the NAACP, three thousand dollars each to Glad and the Trevor Project, as far as twenty five hundred of Equality California Institute. Each of the current members of the West Hollywood City Council has received donations from Buck, with the exception of the council member Lindsay Harvey. Those donations has ranged from forty thousand dollars to. Um, Fourteen thousand dollars varies of campaign of Mayor John, as a total of one thousand dollars for two council members John election campaigns. A, a neighbor in Laura's apartment building said that he saw Dean enter into Buck's apartment shortly after midnight on Monday. Paramedics respond to the 911 call, found Dean dead at 1 a.m. Monday morning. The local county sheriff's department homicide bureau is investigating the incident and said that it is taking new looks into Jamil Moore's death as well. <sighs> so, this man allegedly has been killing gay men allegedly and Jamil Moore and also Dean now when it comes to black gay men who's reported bucks as shooting them with um, meth says the police turned away now this is about Jamil this is about Jamil Moore and I want to share his story or what is going about with him because I said a little bit now just you're just weakening to get out of the station harsh words as far as you remember a gay man that tries to report Ed Buck before a tragic death of Jamil Moore now Jasmine a black lesbian activist who has brightened about what she sees as far as divided between white and black gays called the district attorney grants immunity as far as black males prostitute who have made their contract with buck so they can talk about it um 
Jasmine has written about Moore's death with her blog and published pages on Moore's personal journey in which he he talks about um, he used drugs and relationship with Buck and the canon said that the young men have been told has told her they went to we who share a station to report incident which Buck with Buck but were asked to leave because deputies believed they were the weakening of there was a weakening of high of meth we cannot treat black gay men differently when they're black female sex workers when we try to report aggress aggressive pimps Kenneth said now Jasmine also said that alleged that the incident where Buck engaged young black men into to use drugs and said that soon we'll publish more information about the blog including videos interviews and pages of more journals she noted that Seymour a lawyer engaged as far as represent as far as Buck known as the dependent last year serial killers known as the Grim Reaper Buck so okay to the late Jamil, but we have saved young gay men. Nixon said, my son is more than just a sex worker. He was my son. My whole life has been turned upside down. I just want justice and Buck needs to be held accountable for all these things done. Paul Scott, the president of the LA Gay Pride spoke allegedly allegations as far as Nixon and other Bucks engaged a son in prostitute. Black men had been haunted for their body parts as long as he said he said that Buck had the money to order a black boys um, like they was the auction on the auction block. Okay. So we're talking about more and we're talking about more and we're talking about um Dean, two black gay men, both dead, allegedly from Ed Buck's house. Allegedly, somebody said that they saw him there around the morning time. Um, the 55-year-old African-American man found there Monday, Laura Avenue apartment of Ed Buck's. So both men have been near this house, allegedly. Both end up dying there. Both allegedly using drugs, I'm assuming. That's speculation. And in an interview, Dean Rume said that, said for years that he was a powerful, wonderful person. I lived with him. He never did drugs. I never seen him use drugs. So Dean's Rume is saying that they never did. He never did drugs. So Timothy Dean Rume said he didn't ever do drugs. So something happened these are two guys that just so happened to be black they both ended up with Ed Buck allegedly and they both end up dead and they feel as though the media is not giving them much coverage because they're black and they're gay and I can understand that and they feel as though if they were white and gay it'd be much more of an outpour but it's not and I can understand it as well but it's the thing that gets me. I, I said on this story before, someone sent me this story about um, Jamil Moore before, but I really didn't want to touch it because when it comes to drugs and stuff and people using drugs and it becomes a very hard thing to prove. When you're a person, let's, let me just step away from this just for a second. If you're a person on drugs, please get out. Because look what these families is going through. They're trying to get justice for you. And a lot of times when you're on drugs. Okay, let me just give you a little rough case y'all know about drugs. When you meet people on drugs, you never meet the person. You meet the drug. You're talking to the drug. You're not talking to the person. So the conversation you're going to have is going to be with the drug. That means they're not going to remember nothing they're really doing. Which makes you a target. Which makes you a target for a lot of things. And when you wake up, you're like, oh my God, how did I get here? That's drugs. Now here it is, two guys that happen to be gay and one said one didn't use drugs and stuff at all. And basically, um, one didn't use drugs. Timothy M. Dean didn't use drugs, the 55-year-old, allegedly. 
And they both end up with Ed. They both end up dead in this apartment. And they still live as though it's not an outcry for it. And I do believe something is very suspect between this only because how could two people go to the same place and end up dead? Both doing the same thing, end up dead. Now, it's still questionable to me because they feel as though due to the position that he sits in that, that it's not really alcohol. It's kind of like a silent alcohol because a lot of times people pull screen stream pull strings and it can stop a lot of things. And the death of Jamil Moore as a young man died on a Monday beyond the tragic. However, because they both black and gay, justice is not prevailing. So please don't let us have another R. Kelly situation here. If people are crying out for help, listen, Jamil Moore is only 26 years old. And Timothy Dean is 55 years old. Now they both with this man who allegedly is 64, it says here, but on this thing here it says 65. So he's older and it's definitely something going on. Definitely something going on. He's born in 1954. So it's definitely something going on, but they don't give the dates as far as the year. So I just wanted to give you this story about them and they said for friends of Ed, the second man found dead is false. They said that he didn't do drugs. So it just becomes very questionable when it comes down to these two situations and stuff. For friends, the second man found dead is false. That is, is a life of pain and depression. And in February month, 755, um, Timothy Dean took the plunge off the roof. And then, uh, let me just read this real quick. Dean life has been cut short. Authorities call Monday the West Hollywood apartment. Democrats activist donor Ed Buck and found Dean unconscious and not breathing. Paramedics pronounced him dead at the scene. And it's just something definitely going on. It's definitely something definitely going on. So they found him dead at the scene. Dean's life was cut short earlier this week. Authorities called on Monday. West Hollywood. It's on the scene. The cause of Dean's death has not been released. But ex, but Buck's attorney, Steph's statement, apparently overdosed. Dean ingested um, substance um, as far as another location. Came over and intoxicated. And... In days since, the circumstances of Dean death has been promised a homicide investigation because of the subject. And they said basically, um, Jamil Moore, 26 year old, died of um, methamphetamine overdose at Buck's apartment, which was littered with drugs and a whole bunch of stuff. For Dean's friends, it's painful. He was an angel. So, with the Dean situation, they say he didn't do drugs. With Jamil Moore, they saying they did. And once again, we can't go to neither one of them because they both dead. But his attorneys is at full charge and stuff. I'm going to let y'all be the judge during this because you know what? I've had drug people in my family and stuff and it's a hard situation. The only thing I can say is if people go into the same place and end up dead, this man should not be walking around. My personal opinion. He shouldn't be walking around. And I feel as though he needs to be locked up until a further investigation is going on. That's my personal opinion. We're talking about two men that's dead. If if somebody came to somebody's apartment and somebody else came in and they both ended up dead, I mean, what all kind of clues you got you need? Here is two people, 155. And another one was only 26 and they both dead. They both black, they both gay. Same place, going to Ed's house. Now basically it's thing that Timothy didn't get high and Jamil Moore got high. But that's allegedly too, cause you can't ask, maybe Jamil wasn't high that day. Maybe they didn't do drugs that day. Maybe they both was drug. And this is the one thing that I hate about these stories. 
you can't go to the person because they're dead. They got rid of the evidence. So here it is two men that could have been preyed upon, set upon, now they both murdered. And now their parents got to figure out what's going on. But anyway, I love your feedback on this. And this is a story I said on. I really didn't want to do it only because I hate doing stories where the victim is dead and can't tell us how this story. And here is a man that they basically you got proof that two people that went there and got killed and died allegedly they both died and here it is he's still walking around still walking around so we're basically living a a a, a situation where something is wrong with this picture so my question is why isn't ed buck locked up until further notice you got two dead bodies here. Why is this man walking around? Why is this man walking around? Because his attorney? Now, allegedly, he done got two men killed. Just happened to be gay. And then black. But anyway, I want to hear your feedback on this. How do you feel about this? Do you feel as though he's guilty? Do you feel as though he's killing people? Do you feel as though he's going out find somebody else sprung out on drugs? Because when you, like I said before, when you're on drugs, you don't know the person. You're meeting a drug. You could basically slap them, do everything to them. They ain't going to remember that. They're not going to remember. It is the most, it is a target that is the easiest target in the world. A person sprung out on drugs, just like a person drunk. They're not there. You're talking to the drug. And all you got to do is think it is. If you ever had a drink, you end up like, how did I just fall asleep? That's how it goes. If, if not even doing drugs, just imagine you was laying down, you was tired, you just fell asleep. That's how it happens. You just leave your body and wake up the next day and say, oh my God, I can't believe I fell asleep. That's how it happened with these. My personal opinion. They fell out. They went there. Something happened, I don't know. Because the witnesses are both dead. And yet and still, this man is walking around. Anyway, I love your feedback and subscribe to my channel. Um, I'll be watching your feedback. I definitely want to read how y'all feel about this. Sound off. Be the voices for these two men that's been killed. Two black gay men and stuff. And I'll let y'all love you. And at the top, there's an Instagram button. You follow me, I follow back. Let you I love you. And thank you for watching. Kiss three.